Hey everyone, it's Laura with Pampered Chef. Welcome to Tuesday. Tonight we, uh, I know sometimes <clears throat> Taco Tuesday, but I'm going the opposite direction. We're going with some Chinese uh, food and doing it from home. So we're doing a spaghetti squash chow mein, which is kind of like, well, what happened to the good stuff? Well, we're making some modifications, okay? So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So the first thing is I'm gonna show you what I've been doing in the skillets, okay? So right here in this skillet, I braised some celery, okay? So uh, there's another video of how you can do that. So I've already done the braising of the celery. This is gonna add some great crunch right into our dish, okay? Now everything tonight, everything besides the celery was from the freezer or the fridge. What does that mean? It means that my prep has been minimal because I had it all prepped when I purchased it. Um, did you know that cabbage can last in your fridge for about a month? Yep. So what I do is I buy my heads of cabbage, I chop them up, I put them in a bag like this. They will stay in your fridge for a month. Yeah, this has been in the fridge for a while. So, um, in fact, it had some frozen parts to it. I obviously put it in the wrong section. But, so right here, we have our spaghetti squash, which I showed how to do that the other day. So this was in the fridge, and so now I'm just heating it up. I've got a little bit of onion in the middle to give it some really good flavor. And then over here in this skillet is our cabbage. So I actually have some broth in there and I'm just cooking this up to soften it a little. But what's great about cabbage is you can soften it and yet you can do it with kind of like an al dente like pasta where you still get that crunch, which is, we like the crunchy stuff with Chinese food. So this is nice to have that um, option because I like the crunch. So. So a spaghetti squash right here, um, heating up, excuse me. And then my meat is actually hamburger that I had already cooked. So all I have to do, my camera doesn't want to stand up. I don't know what's going on. I gotta get my life together. Okay, all right. So hamburger meat from, um, my brain just like totally zipped out. Um, this is something I actually cooked already. And so all I have to do is put this in here when I'm ready, okay? But let me show you our sauce. Sorry, do you ever have brain cramps like that? Like you're just talking midstream and all of a sudden, boof, gone. All right, so, um, welcome to 40s. So for all you people under 40 and you don't understand, well, one day, one day it's your turn, okay. So we have some soy sauce, reduced so, um, sodium, and I have garlic in here. So fresh garlic, I just take our you know trusty garlic press. And again, this is one of those areas where I, you know, I find, I want you to, you know, use all those hacks that you see in the, you can go to the store and buy things that make your life easier, but garlic is not one that I will skimp on, okay? So now, the recipe calls for regular olive oil, but I'm going to use sesame oil. This is gonna add a lot of flavor with just, it's just so good, okay? All my Asian dishes I make with, I use um, sesame oil, okay? So you only need to add two tablespoons of that. And then the recipe called for fresh ginger. Guess what? <laughs> Didn't have any. So use this. Now dried ingredients are more potent, so you only need half. So the recipe calls for two teaspoons of ground turkey would be a fantastic substitute. You don't have to use, um, ground turkey is a fantastic substitute for all beef, okay? So whatever you have on hand. Um, ginger or any, any seasoning, you only need half if it's dried. So the recipe called for two teaspoons of fresh ginger. That means I'm only gonna use one teaspoon of ginger because it's more potent, okay? So remember that. I always have a hard time remembering that. And then recently I um, read it again and somehow it's sticking in my mind. <laughs> Go figure. All right, so, so this is our sauce, okay? So something to remember too is that you don't need a lot of sauce or dressing in your dishes. Um, if it's stirred correctly, and it, I got a hair, guys. Sorry, I got two dogs. Um, if, if it's just stirred correctly and incorporated, your sauces and your dressings are going to go so far. So you don't need a whole lot, okay? Make sure you measure that, not with your heart, but you measure that, actually measure it, okay? So one thing I will suggest is a good knife. Now, I'm not going to use the whole onion. I got the other part in there. So instead of just keeping it like this, I'm gonna chop it 
and then put it in the prep bowl. This way, my next recipe, my whatever it is in the next couple of days or whatever, that's part of, I'm already chopping, so not, why not just chop the rest of it and it's done. These little things, you guys, um, I'm going to venture to say that your life is busier than mine, okay? Um, our life has changed so much over the years. Your life is probably busier than mine. Well, I still do these little hacks because they save me so much time. I love cooking. I love it. I don't want to spend five hours in the kitchen doing it. So use some of these little hacks so that you can get in and out of the kitchen. If you love it, if you hate it, good God, we don't want to spend forever in here. So do some of these things and then go on to enjoy the rest of things in life. So let's check on our skillet over here. So here's our spaghetti squash. Nice and, oh, good Lord. Okay. So right here, and then I'm going to add in our beef and our cabbage, and I'll take a picture of our final bowl. Have a great night.